Hi and welcome back, it's Vicky here and today I have two cards for you using the inlaid die cutting technique. I will be showcasing products from the latest release by Pink Fresh Studio. I am browsing uh, quickly some of the products that have just been released and I will be using two of those today. Keep in mind that this is part of a blog hop with lots of inspiration and many giveaways, so make sure to visit my blog for all the details. For my first card I'm using this big tie that has just been released, it is called Beautiful Blooms and I love it because it is big and it really makes a statement of to on front of your card. Now I have run it through my die cutting machine and I'm going to separate everything. So for my card I will be using both the negative and the positive cutout. So for uh, my background I'm starting out by adding a little bit of inking all around this uh, panel. This is going to help uh, the flower when I put everything together to stand even more. I'm using my blending brush to keep everything quite subtle since I don't want to have a lot of saturation of color there. And I'm using my Distress Oxide Ink. Now I have this double sided tape which I'm going to uh, apply on top of this white cardstock. And um, the idea here is to create something sticky for the back of my cutout panel. This way I will be able to easily put all the pieces together since the backing is going to be covered with glue. So I'm peeling off uh, the backing here. I'm going to place it at the back of my cutout panel. And when I turn it around you will see that it is full of glue. I'm going to place inside my intricate die and it fits like a puzzle inside. So now I need to do some die cutting with different colored cardstocks. So I will end up having all the little pieces that I need to put my image together. By the way, since this is a very intricate die, I'm using a metal seam on my die cutting machine, which really makes a big difference. I die cut the image four times, two times out of two shades of uh, pink and two more times out of two shades of green, which means that I end up having tons and tons of little pieces to put together. But here is my way of uh, doing inlaid technique, which is really quick and easy. So all I do is just place one panel on top of the other and press the little pieces with my pick tool. Just make sure that these two papers are perfectly aligned and you are good to go. So as I press uh, down those tiny little pieces, they stick on the glue. You can see here I move to my lighter pink, again I'm pressing with my pick tool all those pieces that I want to stick down. So the first flower is ready and now I'm moving on to do the leaves. So again I have to pop up a few of those pieces so that I can align everything together nicely and then I can start poking the tiny little green pieces that I need to stick down. If you do it this way, you will see that everything comes together really quickly. You don't have to fight with tiny little pieces. So my light green is ready. I will move on to the darker shade of green now. And you can see that the image is ready to go. All I need to do is to add a sentiment. It says setting hugs, nice and bold. And it comes from the new stamp set, which is called Abstract Builder. Just like always, you will find everything you need linked down below. I added some crystal gems to embellish my project and then all I have to do is to stick this panel on top of a standard card that's 4 and a quarter by 5 and a half. And here are some close-up photos. The fun thing about this die is that you can easily get a stained glass look if you add glossy accents on top of those pieces. For my next card I'm going to use this new gorgeous stamp set which is called Hanging Florals. It has a matching die and again I'm going for the inlaid technique. So I have here a piece of cardstock and a piece of pattern paper with this wood grain design and I'm going to place the die on top and run it through my die cutting machine. I'm going to put some glue at the back and put everything together on top of my panel. Now the outside area is nicely stuck down. I'm going to use the wreath temporarily as a template since I need to stick the inside piece here. So this is going to fit inside like a puzzle. And then I can place the inside and secure it down with glue. Now I have cut out the wreath one more time out of white cardstock. 
I use the negative space to align nicely the stamp inside. There is also a little bow that you can stamp later on and cut out. So now I'm going to place the cutout piece inside my negative space and I know that the stamp is going to uh, stamp exactly where it needs to. I'm going to apply some black ink there and I will uh, use my alcohol markers to color everything. So this is an alcohol friendly uh, black ink. I'm going to do the stamping a couple of times just to get a good impression and then I will go ahead and start coloring. Now the flowers and the leaves are quite small so I'm only using two shades of purple here to color the flowers and I will use only two shades of green for the leaves. Finally it's time to put everything together. I'm going to use white glue at the back of the cutout and place it inside. It's going to fit like a puzzle and since I want to have something popping up on my card I'm going to use the bow and stick it on top just by using some foam tape at the back. The stamp set with the wreath comes together with lots of sentiments. One of my favorites is the one that says you are amazing. I think it fits many occasions and has a lovely script font. For this card I also used some gems here and there to embellish it a little bit more and then I stuck this panel on top of a standard card that's 4 and a quarter by 5 and a half. And these were the cards for today, I hope you had fun, that you got inspired, if you did don't forget to leave me a comment, to like this video and also subscribe if you haven't done so already. You will find the full list of all the supplies down below in the description area. Thank you all so much for joining me today and I'll see you all next time.